Hello, everyone. I'm Susan. This week, we are going to talk about the interracial and intercultural relationship, which is Chapter Five in our test book. The intercultural relationship encompasses interracial relationship or relationship that cross socially constructed racial groups. An intercultural relationship formed between friends or romantic relationship, families, and co-workers. The typography of intercultural relationship include interracial, interethnic. International and interreligions. The interracial relationship is the relationship between different races, and for example, a black and a white person. The interethnic relationship is the relationship between people who identify differently in terms of ethnicity or ethnic background. Ethnicity refer to share heritage. Place of origins, identities, and pattern of communication among a group. For example, like Hispanic and Asian coworker in a workplace. And the international relationship refer to relationship that develop across nation, culture, and citizenship lines. So it's simply like Chinese and Americans. And the interreligions or interfaith relationship refer to relationship where people from two different religions or faith. So, for example, like Christian and Buddhist. So here are the four different types of intercultural relationship. There are a lot of challenges of intercultural relationship. I'd like to talk about the. Challenges between China and the United States. So the first one is individualism versus collectivism. The United States has the individualistic culture, where the interests of the individual are placed before the interests of the group. But China has a very typical collectivistic culture. It tend to focus on the needs, interests, and goals of the group. The second one is power distance. Power distance is the tendency of individuals with less power in the organization to accept the unequal distribution of a power. So China has a very high power distance culture, which reward age, rank, and status. For example, in a traditional Chinese family, we have to listen to our parent or grandparent before we making a decision. And the final decision that we make together, usually, is my parent or my grandparents' decision. Um, and I think American has a low power distance based on my experience. Not only in the family, but also in school or in workplace. The third one is uncertainty avoidance. I think the United States has a low uncertain avoidance culture. It tend to be more informal and less structured. So now I'm giving an example of education between China and United States. In the United States. Teacher encourage student creative new things or new approaches, but in China, especially in the high school period, most of parent and teacher don't care about your creative thinking. They only care about can you get a good grade in the、um, college entrance examination. And the fourth one is masculinity and femininity. In the United States, men and women seems to be equal.、Uh, I'd like to hear from you guys about this. In China, women now need to work due to the high living cost. However, in most area, men are the one need to pay for the house, and the men have to pay for the most of their living expense in their family. The last one is time orientation and Confucian dynamism. 
The Confucian culture focuses on perseverance, hard work, frugality, respect for elders, and hierarchical structures. And also, China has a five thousand years of history, and that is pretty different from the United States. Now, I want to talk about the opportunity of intercultural relationship. As an international student, I have studied in the United States for five years already, and I made a lot of friends in the United States. Because I'm an international student, so I'm more easily to make international friends in the campus. Because there's really a lot of activities for different culture, different country, different festival involved. So I've learned a lot of cultural knowledge during like making friends. It also challenged myself when you making friends from different culture, different country. I also learned new skills from my Korean friend about cooking, Korean food, and I also learned Indian dance from my India friends. From the intercultural relationships, we can also tasting different kind of food, and probably traveling all around the world. Because I want to discuss about why intercultural relationship are important in the global context. So here is some key terms from intercultural elements for social justice in the global context. It include intercultural ally, intercultural alliance, intercultural bridge work. And for the discussion questions, the first one is share your experience of intercultural relationship in workplace, school, romantics, or online. Uh, how do you forming as sustaining the relationship? Um, the second one is why intercultural relationship are important in the global context, and the last is my reference page. Thanks for listening.